As a man, have you ever felt like a woman doesn't desire you enough? Sometimes you practically beg her for sex and this makes you feel like you've lost your masculine touch. Well, worry no more because at the end of this video, you would have learned how to make her chase you for sex. Sexual intimacy is one of the most important aspects of every romantic relationship. These sexual organs in our body are not just there for fancy. It's for us to be able to enjoy sexual communication, intimacy within the confines of marriage, of course. One of the things that tremendously bond you both is how often you do the do. So if there's no any form of sexual activity in your marriage for a period of three months, four months, six months, even one year, then that marriage don't get killed ego. <laughs> because like most people will say, the healthiness or the happiness of a romantic relationship is how often you get together and bond and you know have sex or engage in sexual activity. I mean, you know be brother and sister and you know be roommates. If you wanted a roommate, you could have gotten a roommate. But this person is your wife and you ought to have sexual intimacy. Because it's one of the things that will guarantee that your relationship is mutually satisfying, beneficial and even happy. And it doesn't necessarily have to be penetration like most people think because a lot of people suffer from so many things. Some people are incapacitated in so many ways. Some people can't get it up. A lot of people can't even afford the penetration. So you don't have to go the nine yards, but you can still be sexually intimate. This can be kissing, touching, blow job, hand job, you know, all the blow and the jobs. <laughs> you know yourself so you can do all of that to bring yourself to that place of satisfaction even if there is no penetration now with that explanation out of the way let's get into the real talk sex for a woman isn't just about the physical activity for a man it can be but for a woman it is not because we are different you have to start from the mind all right you have to stimulate her emotionally and that is why i like to think that foreplay is in two dimensions you have the physical foreplay and you have the mental foreplay a lot of the time people focus on the physical foreplay you do the kissing the smooshing you know all of those things but if a woman is not emotionally stimulated sexually for you then it's just like you're wasting your time her body might be there but trust me her mind no be there so you have to be able to reach her emotionally for the purpose of this video i'm not going to really go into the physical foreplay aspect because I'm very sure a lot of people already know how to do that and I will link a video in the description where I talked about the physical foreplay in more details. So for the mental foreplay which I think is not something that is so popular amongst men and this is where you get it wrong. Like I said, if you're not able to reach her emotionally, her body might be there but you might not be able to reach her. I mean there is having sex and there is having sex. When it's mutually satisfying, you know. When you make her happy, you know. If you're not able to get through to her where she is, then trust me, you just have her body and that's all you can get. One of the ways through which you can make her chase you is to serve her. I mean, serve your wife. Now, don't come for me yet. Just hear me out. <laughs> Because a lot of the times when you hear something like serve your wife, like what is she saying? I don't understand serve your wife. Why would you tell me to serve my wife? Don't I go to work? I provide for the family. I put food on her table, clothes in her bag, money in her pocket, roof over her head. I do all of these things and you're telling me to serve my wife. Come on. You got to be kidding me, right? Okay, okay, okay. Just calm down. <laughs> hear me out and I promise you if you follow the things I'm going to say in this video, it's going to benefit you. She will chase you like there is no tomorrow. Now, for the record, you can never outserve your wife. I mean, her natural inclination is of selflessness, service, sacrifice. So you can never outserve her. All I say is fill her love tanks in ways that she desires to be loved. So the question is, do you even know the ways through which she likes to be loved? Do you like know what she likes? Do you know what her love language is? Because every woman on earth has a specific set of love languages. Some love to receive gifts. Some love to be told words of reassurance. Some love to spend quality time with you. Only thinking about your wants, needs, and desires, it kills marriage. Listen, you don't have to believe me or put anything I say into consideration, okay? This message is for those who truly want to work on their marriage and bring it to that place where it's mutually fulfilling and unhappy. You know, it's so funny where statistics recently have shown that 50% of marriages are in the rocks and the remaining 50 are just barely thriving. Like, do you know what that means? It means that a lot of things are happening. And I know, I know, I get it. You say, okay, what about the women? Don't they need to do? There are a lot of things we need to do as women. But this video is not for maybe another time I'll do a video like that. Because I believe that it's not just a one-sided thing. It's a combination of two people. I mean, two becomes one. 
all right so it's a collective effort it's about being intentional about everything you're doing love is not just by word of mouth you can't just say i love you and you don't do anything love is a choice and when you make a choice to love somebody you are intentional about that person you do things that would please the person you do things that will not hurt the person you take your time to find out what this person loves and likes and then you try to fill their tanks in that way that is one way you can serve your wife and that is one thing that would make her chase you number two appreciate her unexpressed appreciation is interpreted as entitlement I mean, you go on and on and say, doesn't she know that I love her? Doesn't she know that I appreciate her? Do I have to say it? Yes, you have to say it. A lot of us women thrive on the things we hear. I mean, how did you think you got her in the first place? Did you get her by just staring at her? Didn't you say a word? Those things you were saying then were like hitting her differently. That's why she's there with you. So your words are powerful. I say this a lot. Use your words. Appreciate her. I mean, you can never over-appreciate a woman. And I have never seen a woman who is genuinely appreciated, who doesn't honor and respect her husband and adore him and just treats him the way he needs to be treated. Like a king. You see a mommy Gio or a first lady who is so loyal, so adorable when her husband is preaching and comes close to her. She stands up. She's holding his clothes. She's doing all of these things, but you don't know what that man does in the house. You don't know the level of sacrifice, the love, the work he has to put in. You have to put in the work. A lot of people are just mentally lazy. You don't want to think about it. You don't want to give room to think about it. You don't even want to look at the person and discover what they need. Love is about serving. A lot of you will say, yeah, I'm a man. I don't need to serve anybody. I just need to lead and she would follow. But you've forgotten that the greatest example of leadership is service. I mean, look at our Lord Jesus Christ. He was a leader, but he served his disciples. He washed their feet. He was everywhere serving them and ultimately gave his life for mankind. I mean, what service can be more than that? That is a true sign of a leader. That is what a leader does. You lead by serving others. You don't lead by bossing around people or maybe coming into the house and the whole element is just tense. People are scared of you. Children are running under the couch. Everybody is just, oh that you don't come oh, oh you know you don't lead by that when the atmosphere is tense people do not feel free to be themselves and to express love and to be happy that is just the truth i hope you're getting value from this video so far if you are just put the like button thank you so much number three date your wife a lot of the things you did when you were dating your wife lots of men just stopped doing these things I mean, when you were dating her, you would call her, send a romantic text, buy a flower, buy a gift, take her out on a date. You were just doing everything you needed to do. But now you've gotten her and now she's in your house. You don't do any of those things anymore. And then you expect her to be the same lovely little girl that you knew then. It doesn't work that way. It's more about give and take. What you give is most likely going to determine what you receive in return. So go back to dating your wife. This doesn't mean that you don't have to go to work. You know, some people are so busy, admitted. I mean, with the economic situation and everything, people have to just work. But in your spare time, anytime you find yourself less busy, think about her. Think about the little, little things that is going to make a lot of difference. Date her. I mean, practically date your wife. Some men don't even take their wives out. And it's so funny how this same set of men will get a girlfriend outside and they begin to do all of those things all over again. So it means that somehow in your subconscious, you actually know what to do. But I wonder why people are just so lazy to put in the work. Maybe it's this mentality of chasing. You've chased her and now you have her in your home and you just become so lazy to do all of these things. Trust me, whether you like it or not, like I said, whether you believe me or not, marriage is about making the right sacrifices being intentional and putting in the work. One thing I'd like for you to remember is what made her fall in love with you in the first place. You were romantic, you were there for her, you would call her, you know, all of those little, little things you were doing. Go back to dating your wife. What makes a marriage work is not difficult. It's not a secret. It's not a mystery. It's about the little, little things. Sometimes we overlook these things, but they are giants. These are things that are going to trigger either affection or hate. And the thing about women is that when you decline in all of these activities, she begins to withdraw and she begins to resent you. And the day she stands up and say, I'll not do it again, that is not the day she quits. She has started quitting like maybe six months or one year ago. She just, she could just quit most more they come. Until one day she tell you that, okay, I'm done. You don't really do me like that, you know? So do the little things. Be available. Love her like you would a side chick. Yes. 
Because a lot of time you get a side chick and you're just doing all of the things that you're supposed to do for your wife. You think she doesn't blossom anymore. You think she doesn't look fine anymore. What do you do to her? How do you treat her? Are you the type that she can't even communicate with you? You don't even listen to her. You're always shutting her down in different ways. You don't listen to her. You can't have a good conversation. You can't even have a good life. When was the last time you laughed with your wife? All right, just go back to doing all of this small, small thing. And I promise you, I assure you, she's going to chase you around for sex. I hope you found value in this video. If you did, don't forget to subscribe for more insight about relationship, personal development, and how to make better choices in life. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you in the next one. Bye for now.